<laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh my god. That's bananas. Oh. Yo, that's nuts. What's up guys and welcome back to Shifting Lanes Garage. My name's Chad. I brought Greg along. The Mustang, as you can see here, is on the dyno and today we finally find out how much horsepower this beast can make. Reason I brought Greg along, Greg, start the clock. I'm gonna name every single mod on this car in less than 30 seconds. Ready, Starting, set, go. We have a Vortec V3 supercharger with front mount intercooler. We have IDX injectors, 1050 to be exact. We have a fuel system by Lund, or I'm sorry, Lethal Performance. Converts it from a return list to a return style fuel system. We have a clutch by Mantic and Flywheel. We have a rebuilt trans by Calmer Transmission that should hold about a thousand horsepower. We have a drive shaft shop, say that five times fast, uh, carbon fiber drive shaft, one piece. We have Ford Racing Axles. We have Stita's Stop the Hop Kit. We have a ported 2018 intake manifold with the IMRCs locked out. And we have American Racing long tube headers hooked up to, I believe, a three inch MagnaFlow exhaust. Not too bad. 38 seconds. I just stopped it too late. Dang so, 30, 38. Look, 38 is not bad for that amount of parts. Yeah. I would have probably gone to a minute 38. Oh, That's and very I also, impressive. And I forgot. I, I can always forget this piece. Yes, we have a helmet on the dyno, but that is my new shifter. That is huge for keeping these transmissions alive because it bolts directly to the transmission, like we said in previous videos. Huge. But, um, Greg, how excited are you for me for this car? Uh, for you, I'm very excited. For me, I'm not excited because this means you're, you're, you're gonna be way, way, way faster than I am in every conceivable way. So just to kind of put an idea on it, the stock Mustang comes with 435 horsepower at the crank from factory. I am adding literally a Hyundai Veloster ends worth of power and then some to this car. So you're adding Hanson's car to your car. Exactly, like that is a pretty hot hatch and yeah, just the parts I've added to this are gonna yeah. make more power to that. That's no slouch as a car. Like we've, I think, I'm not sure if you've driven it, Chad, but I've driven that, not Hanson's, but I've driven that car. Hanson obviously owns it. Like it's a fast car for a small little hatchback, like hot hatch front wheel drive. Like. It's very quick. So, so putting it into perspective of like adding that kind of power to another car is pretty ridiculous. Like we are actually, if you go by crank, and I understand real power is right here at the wheels, but if you go by crank, which is what every single OEM advertises their car's horsepower rating at, because it would be foolish for Dodge to say rate the Hellcat at rear wheel horsepower while Mustang, Camaro are doing it at the crank. But in any rate. Um, we are knocking on the door as adding as much horsepower to this as even the Polestar. So with that being said, Greg, on the spot, mm -hmm. what are we making at the wheels today? Um, ooh, at the wheels. 6.15. He's gonna be off by hopefully 50 horsepower. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I'm just thinking like first run, 6.15, dial it in, maybe do maybe we, a tweak or whatever, but. When we leave my today, guess, when we guess. leave today, the street tune on this will make uh, the street tune on this will make six seventy five. Okay, that is better. <laughs> <laughs> I just went low so you could uh, feel better yeah. when it goes higher. You know? um, I'm right there. I'm gonna go six seventy eight at the wheels. Okay. Um, now let's go find the expert and see if we're even yeah. in the ballpark. Really quick before we leave, can we just look at this dyno setup and how awesome it is? First off, this is like Blue Sky's new uh, shop. You guys have probably seen it in other videos if you've been watching stuff on our vlog or whatever, but this is a whole four post lift that you can kind of just raise the car up, you can just drive it forward and it goes straight up. And then you can put another car underneath. Obviously you can't put that car on the dyno because the car that needs to be on the dyno would be on this lift, but you have extra storage here. This is such a smart setup because you can have another car in here and your dyno room isn't just like relegated to one car. You can actually have, it's just a really nice setup. I've never seen a dyno setup like this in person. I've only seen it online. Being here in person looking at it, it's really, really good. I, I think it's another, very, very Another smart. offshoot of having your car on the lift is let's just say hypothetically, uh, we have to get under the car. Yep. We don't now have to pull it out, find a lift. Correct. You just and pull then, it forward, lift and it up, and you're good. Hopefully we don't get, do you have to do that today, but you're yeah. right here, so. Yeah, but for a mega performance shop like this, like yeah. it's really helpful to have this kind of setup. Very cool. Yes, yeah, so let's go find the man, the myth, the legend himself. That guy. <laughs> Who's standing in a chassis. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows Jeff by this point. He is the man responsible for Who? basically uh, well, his shop is responsible for putting the Mustang together. Yep. Um, 
Jeff, what exactly are we doing today? And then at the end of that, tell us how much power we're going to make at the rear tires. Uh, so today we're doing some data logging with Wonder Racing uh, to dial in the tune. They sent us a base file. Uh, so we always want to verify that fueling, timing, we're not knocking. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. And hopefully we're going to be in that 650, maybe upper, closer to 700 range. Pick a number. Uh, six. 83. All right. All right. Well, the expert 675, has... 678, 683. All right. So I like where he's going. I'm going Price is Right rules. Yeah. Not, yeah, right. So, well, his first guess was 615. I well, almost I slapped to, him. I wanted to go low uh -huh. to make sure that your ego felt like, oh, man, more than 615. This is great. <laughs> so we're going to be right. doing a yeah, couple yeah, yeah. of runs, sending the logs back to Lund Racing. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we're going to slowly build and then hopefully get to uh, a finished product and know what we're going to be making on the street. <laughs> Holy hell. Now, real quick, that was only to 5,000 RPM. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, well, it'd be, hold on, hold on. Well, hold on. now I'm pleasantly surprised with my first one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do love a smooth graph, right? It's just nice. So what, was the, what was the torque at? So torque 556. Yeah, Ooh, that's good. So 5800. So we're gonna still. Wow, that's more torque than I thought it would make. That's great. That's pretty good. It's nice and flat. Yeah. I mean, it's building, but it's pretty flat. It's probably going to start, the torque will probably start falling off now. Because the, yeah. usually where they intersect, you start getting the trail off a little bit. Yeah. What is that, 52, 52? Yeah. We, 50, that's 50, the horse, 52, yeah, 52, 50, I think is the number. That's the like, horsepower limit. That's me how I know. My last so, five cars have been turbo cars. I'm like, oh, I know what that means. <laughs> so, yeah, again, guys, that is, that power at only 5,000 RPM. Um, or a little over 5,000, it looks like. Yeah, uh, it, uh, like 5,500, maybe 5,600. So what we're going to do now is uh, you're going to pull the log, send it over to Lund, and then we're going to take a look at it and kind of get an idea of what tuners look at when um, when they're doing the uh, when they're look, tuning your car, basically. What they want to see, what they don't want to see, what they need to add, take away, nice. stuff like that. So yeah, we got to keep it cool. So sorry about that. But yeah, we're going to go take a look at that now. So we have the logs up. So what exactly are we looking at here? So what we're looking at here is the blue line here. This is our RPM rise. And this purple line here is just my foot. This is the pedal. So we're cruising and then we snap to wide open throttle and we're staying wide open throttle as RPM goes up. One of the things we're looking for in a log is what fuel trims are doing. This, you know, we want to make sure that the air fuel is correct. This brown line that looks very squiggly here, um, this is a 5% a swing. This line is adding 5% here, taking 5% out, 0% fuel change here. And this is the computer reacting to what the oxygen sensor is seeing in the car to keep air fuels in the correct, uh, in the correct range. This is always going to have trims. Every car has fuel trims. We try to limit them to within 10%. Uh, in the aftermarket, the OEM lets them go a little bit further than that, maybe 15 to 20 percent before you might throw uh, a check engine light or something like that. Okay, so it may look weird, but we're this is well within safe. This is within a very safe tolerance. Our oxygen sensor is reading the air fuel ratio. The computer is seeing what the oxygen sensor is reading, and it knows what it wants to see, and it's making an adjustment based on that sensor. And it's always, it's a balancing act. I mean, it's so much is going on so quick, um, but it's, you know, it's always gonna be like a wave up, down, up, down. Um, you know, air temperature could change your fuel trims. Um, you know, there's- Elevation, humidity. All, all that stuff will have effect on it. Now the computer should know, hey, I'm at this elevation or I have this air temperature coming in and it's gonna make a change before it even gets to the O2 sensor. But in case it can't do that, that's what this is there for. If the fueling looks good, we're not seeing any um, any knock activity. Uh, timing is nice and stable. Um, you know, there's no reason to not go further. This, the knock sensors will tell us when we've met our limit.
at that time I think we went to 7,000 RPM, so we still have a little, uh, quite a bit to play with. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I think it's... Hold up. Wait a minute. Are you not entertained? It goes without saying, you need to be careful now. <laughs> Holy actual <laughs> shit. That number's not real. Alright, so... <laughs> Okay, so we definitely, if you guessed eight, seven, no, no, that's, we had an issue. It's, unfortunately, we're no. not making 879. I gotta say, it either lost RPM signal or it, um, it spun a little bit, maybe, too. It's so. climbing, it climbs RPM really, really fast. Yeah, well, I think, fast. It, I think it's spun. Okay. I believe it's, I smelt it the first time, a little tired. Okay. Uh, Down the tires okay. no <laughs> I am literally burning out on the dyno. <laughs> you know you have a sufficient amount of but did we get like enough like um, data for Wondle? We should have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should have enough data. He'll tell me if it wasn't a long enough pull for him. All right. So uh, we'll send the log off and uh, touch base with you in a minute. We now have a finished tune. Uh, a finished tune. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna run it one more time, or we're gonna rev it out to 75, 7500, and we're gonna see what kind of power we're we're making uh, at the rear wheels on uh, what we're gonna call our street setup. So back into the dyno. Dude. Dude. <laughs> oh my god. That's bananas. Oh. Yo, that's nuts. Oh my goodness. That is bananas. Okay. We spin? Something, not, something, yeah, because it's still reading crazy high. That's better than you say. Something happened. Uh, <laughs> We're up to 904 slippy horsepower. <laughs> god, oh. darn it. Pretty nice, you got almost 700 foot pounds of torque too. <laughs> pounds feet, Gregson. Uh -huh. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna try to figure this out. We'll do another run in a, <laughs> in a minute. All right, so unfortunately for a couple reasons, we're gonna have to kind of call it there uh, and come back. Um, obviously, as much as I would like to sit here and say, dyno confirmed 900 at the wheels, <laughs> um, we're not there. We're getting some weird RPM signal. Um, but the main reason why we're kind of having to shut it down today is that we have a slight coolant leak somewhere. The upper radiator hose, one of the O-rings on it, is, is not happy. So it's a quick connect hose, great for assembly, but a hose clamp always works better than an than a assembly uh, efficient uh, O-ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately we don't have that lying around. No. So we got to get that part in and then... Um, we're gonna come back and kind of hopefully get, cause our tune should be good, right? Tune's all set. Yeah, we got all the data we need for the tune. The, the tuner has no clue what it makes for power. They don't need to know that. Right. They're just looking at- the, What the computer's saying. The, what the computer's saying, if it's happy. So com computer's happy, air fuels are good, timing's good. It's just, uh, we wanna get a number to know what we want, we have. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, that's, I mean, May or may not have already put a thumbnail that said 700 wheel, question mark. All right, so it is two days later. Uh, we're back in the dyno. We got the computer issues figured out and we got the coolant, uh, coolant situation fixed. all figured out. Yep. So we're finally gonna get our full run. We're gonna find out just how much this car makes at the rear tire. And um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been waiting for this for a long time. So I am crazy excited. So. We're gonna fire her up, let her get to temp, and then let her rip. Okay, so <clears throat> 668. That was a hot pull. Okay. So if you start, you know, we warm this car up, 
but it wasn't heat soaked. So if you heat soak a car, your intake air temps are going to get higher, coolant temps are going to be higher. Um, that's going to decrease your horsepower numbers. I've been at the track and you've just letting it. How much will having the hood up affect so your the heat soak? With the factory air box, well, all right, yeah, the hood off is going to release more temperature, right? So if you're at the track, pop the hood, let the let that temperature escape from there. Um, with a sealed air box on the dyno, you're not going to see much of a change. If you had an open element here, an air filter here, with the hood up versus hood down, that's going to make maybe like a 10 horsepower change. Just put up the hood down on the dyno. Yeah, and that's actually a lot of you guys have commented it. That's something we ran into with our uh, C30 on the Volvo was when we put the cold air intake, well, the design of it put it right smack behind the radiator. So after a couple of pulls, or just coming up the temp, it would actually pull timing, pull stuff like that, and the C30 would make less power, which is why, if you ever own a C30, I know you're watching a Mustang video, this gets weird, but if you ever own a C30, so far, I think there's one intake out there that actually is a sealed system that's better than stock, but the stock air box with a good filter is the way to go with that. Next time, we are actually going to do a couple, I wouldn't call them hacks, but like stuff people do at the track to squeeze a little bit more power out of it. And we're gonna be going for even more, I know, 705 horsepower cold. Uh, seems like enough for a lot of people. I'm not, not a lot of people. But it, we actually could pick up some pretty impressive games, games for like 20 bucks. So you're definitely not gonna wanna miss that one. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, guys, check out Blue Sky. Uh, links in the description. They have an awesome Instagram page. And if, you're, if you need work done, you should reach out to these guys. They do it all. So you're definitely gonna wanna check them out. But again, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with a friend. But for this video, guys, that's a wrap. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.